So we're all familiar with the 5 alpha reductase inhibitors. We know that they block 5 alpha reductase enzyme and prevent testosterone from turning into DHT. The two that are commonly known and that have been on the market for decades are finasteride and dutasteride. However, did you know that there are other 5 alpha reductase inhibitors? I made a video on apistride nearly a year ago and how it's been available for decades in China to treat benign prosthetic hyperplasia, also known as BPH. And it's also used off label for androgenetic alopecia. Well, there are a bunch of 5 alpha reductase inhibitors that never made it to market. Some for being too liver toxic, and others, from what it seems, simply due to funding. Today, we're going to be looking at one in particular. This is FCE28260, also known as PNU156765. But for the purpose of this video, too many numbers, right? So I'm just going to call it FCE. And real quick, YouTube tells me that only 30% of my viewers are subscribed to my channel. So if you're watching this and you're not subscribed, please subscribe and hit the notification bell if you like these kinds of videos. Also, if you want to support the channel, consider becoming a member for as little as $2 a month. Link to everything in the description, including the sources of the research in this video. Well, enough shilling. Let's get on with this video. In the study titled, quote, FCE28260, a new 5-alpha reductase inhibitor in vitro and in vivo effects, unquote, by Gudici et al. FCE and finasteride are compared for their inhibitory effects on 5-alpha reductase activity, both in vitro and in vivo. The study involved using enzyme extracts from rat and human prostate tissue. Prosthetic tissue is rich in 5-alpha reductase enzyme, making it a relevant natural source for studying the enzyme's activity and its inhibition by drugs like FCE. In addition to this natural enzyme source being this prosthetic tissue that they're getting from these poor rats and, I think, human donated tissue samples from biopsies, the researchers used human recombinant 5-alpha reductase type 1 and type 2 isoenzymes. Recombinant DNA technology enables the production of human enzymes in other organisms providing pure enzyme forms for research. In this case, the 5-alpha reductase enzyme exists in at least two main isoforms just for this particular study. There's actually three, but we're mostly focusing on just two for this study, right? This is the type 1 5-alpha reductase enzyme and the type 2 5-alpha reductase enzyme. And they differ in their amino acid sequences, regulation, tissue distribution, and also physiological roles. So in some tissues, you have a higher presence of type 2 than type 1, and vice versa. By studying both isoforms, the researchers could assess the drug's inhibitory effects more specifically and determine whether it selectively inhibits one type over the other or if it's a broad-spectrum inhibitor affecting both isoforms equally. So by what measuring stick are we going to use to test the potency or efficacy of FCE versus finasteride? Well, this is where the IC50 value comes in. The IC50 value representing the concentration of a substance required to block a specific biological function or elicit a specific biological function. Here, this would be the 5-alpha reductase enzyme activity, how much we can block, right? And how much we would need of that particular substance to block by 50%. And this is a pivotal measure of a drug's potency. And this is something else to take into account. The lower the IC50 score, the more potent the drug is. Essentially, it's saying you need a little bit of this substance to do this specific task. So if we find out that we need a little bit of FCE, to inhibit 50% of 5-alpha reductase, that means FCE is more effective at that particular task than finasteride. But I don't want to include any spoilers yet, so let's continue on with the script. So like I mentioned before, we're comparing FCE and finasteride. So when it comes to looking at FCE's IC50 values for blocking the natural sources of rat and human prosthetic 5-alpha reductase enzyme, the respective values are 15 nanomolar and 16 nanomolar. These figures stand in contrast to those of finasteride, which in the natural sources of rat and human prosthetic 
5 alpha reductase displays IC50 values of 30 nanomolar for rats and 52 nanomolar for human prosthetic 5 alpha reductase enzyme. So, right off the bat, for the natural sources, again, the natural sources being what was actually sourced from live, living, in vivo subjects, right? Being the rat and the humans, we can see that FCE is way more effective than finasteride. Now, I mentioned earlier in the paper something about human recombinant 5 alpha reductase. I think there needs to be a further clarification here because this paper also provides IC50 values for those specific kinds of enzymes. So in the context of human recombinant, essentially researchers took the DNA from humans that actually produces this enzyme and injected it into some sort of bacteria. The bacteria began to express this genetic sequence and went on to produce this enzyme. And these particular enzymes are the 5-alpha reductase type 1 and the 5-alpha reductase type 2 isoenzymes specific to humans, not rats, but to humans. So now we can get a more clear and specified view at what FCE and finasteride are going to be doing to the human recombinant type 1 5-alpha reductase and the human recombinant type 2 5-alpha reductase enzymes, both produced by this bacteria. And it should be stressed that these are pretty much essentially identical to what would naturally occur in human counterparts. And the best part about this is that we have this in some sort of laboratory controlled setting where we're free from other human proteins that could interfere with the measuring process or the overall IC50 process. So it allows researchers to get a more clear and in-depth view at what actually is going on in the inhibition of type 1 and type 2 5-alpha reductase. So what did the researchers find? Well, when looking closely at the breakdown for the IC50 values for human recombinant 5-alpha reductase type 1 and type 2 isoenzymes, FCE highlighted just how potent it is at reducing the enzymatic conversion of testosterone to DHT by these enzymes, because it achieved an IC50 value for 3.3 nanomolar for the type 2 enzyme and 36 nanomolar for the type 1 enzyme. As for reference, finasteride, when it came to the same human recombinant 5 alpha reductase enzyme, for type 2, finasteride obtained an IC50 score of 8.5 nanomolar, and for type 1, it obtained an IC50 score of 470 nanomolar. So, in that just that one metric, this makes FCE 13 times more potent than finasteride. So this dual blocking or inhibitory capacity not only speaks to FCE's efficacy, but also its potential applicability across a range of DHT-related conditions like androgenetic alopecia, benign prosthetic hyperplasia, and just really other conditions as well. So let's move on to talking about the molecular weight of FCE over something like dutasteride. So we all know dutasteride, right? Dutasteride inhibits all three isoforms or isoenzymes of 5-alpha reductase. This is the type 1, type 2, and type 3. And it achieves a 98% reduction of circulating DHT levels when taken orally. This broad-spectrum inhibition is facilitated by its competitive and mechanism-based irreversible inhibitory action with IC50 values of 3.9 nanomolar for type 1 5 alpha reductase enzyme and 1.8 nanomolar for the type 2 5 alpha reductase enzyme. So right off the bat, clearly dutasteride is more effective than FCE in this particular IC50 metric and FCE is more effective than finasteride. However, FCE has a molecular weight of 488.595 Dalton, whereas dutasteride has a slightly heavier molecular weight with a weight of 528.539 Dalton. While the difference might seem nominal, it is relevant in the context of the drug's absorption, distribution, metabolism, and excretion. Lower molecular weight compounds like FCE may have a better tissue penetration and could potentially lead to a more favorable distribution profile orally and even topically. 
Compounds with a lower molecular weight, in this case FCE versus dutastride, potentially have better skin penetration capabilities as per the Dalton rule, or I should say the 500 Dalton rule. And if you don't know what that is, you can check in the description below. And we also have things like Fick's Law, essentially when you increase the concentration of a specific molecule, it should create a concentration gradient where the molecules want to diffuse from an area of high concentration to low concentration and essentially push through the skin. But let me go back to talking about FCE real quick. And when it comes to topical application, we know that topical dutastride has a challenge with its higher molecular weight being above 500 Dalton. So when you get above 500 Dalton, it quickly becomes the case that you have to start looking at a higher concentration because just at a typical, quote unquote, typical concentration, it would be harder for that high Dalton molecule to get through the skin. It's not zero, but it quickly approaches zero as you get larger in the Dalton size. So you have to consider things like using microneedling to effectively break the outer barrier of the skin so this molecule can be readily introduced to the deeper layers of the epidermis. But it would be interesting to see what FCE could have been used for. I think it could have been used for mesotherapy or just straight up topical use. Orally on the other hand, and by the way, I'm not saying go buy this thing orally or get it manufactured by a lab by any means, but it could be the case where this thing could have lower side effects like dutastride does at a 0.5 milligram dose compared to an asteroid at a one or five milligram dose. And we have a lot of meta-analyses that actually show that to be the case, where in some instances, dutastride has a better safety profile or I guess you can say side effect rate compared to finasteride. But I think with all this information in mind, FCE genuinely looks like it's just a better version of finasteride, a slightly inferior version of dutasteride when it comes to oral use. However, it could have some applications when it comes to topical use. And honestly, I think this is a real shame because there's just so many different kinds of 5 alpha reductase inhibitors. And I mentioned at the beginning of this video, maybe I'll clip this part up and release it as its own. Who knows? But I mentioned before that some of these things had a degree of liver toxicity to them. But maybe it could be the case that when used as a mesotherapy or when used topically, they don't become significantly systemically available for it to even elicit liver issues. And if that's the case, maybe those specific 5 alpha reductase inhibitors could have a lower IC50 number, maybe they're more potent than something like a mesotherapy dutasteride, or even an oral dutasteride. But again, that's it for this video. So I'm going to leave all my research in the description below for you guys to use and just do a little bit more research on your own. Maybe find your own favorite, I guess, lesser known 5-alpha reductase inhibitor. But yeah, thank you for watching this video so much. If you got to the end of this video, comment in the comment section below. Green apples. Yes, green, G-R-E-E-N, apples. A-P-P-L-E-S. Now, I got to get my ass to bed because it's 4.11 a.m. on April 3rd. 2024. And yeah, I've been staying up a bit, but we got to get those videos done. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Peace out.